I, I heard uh, Andrew and Mocha talk about the trucker convoy, which I think was the most important democratic moment of the pandemic. It got rid of Aaron O'Toole, the fake conservative leader uh, federally. It precipitated the defenestration. That's a fancy word that means throw out the window. It precipitated the defenestration of Jason Kenney in Alberta. It's ironic that the only two politicians it got rid of are nominally conservative. But it's actually not surprising because it forced those leaders to prove, well, are you freedom-oriented or not? Are you authoritarian or anti-authoritarian? Are you for personal sovereignty over your own body? Are you for limited government? Are you for privacy? And both Aaron O'Toole and Jason Kenney failed the test. Very interesting. Um, unfortunately, Jason Kenney and Aaron O'Toole are not Justin Trudeau, who thinks of himself as having been vindicated. I mean, he brought in martial law, and um, he's still considered polite company. Isn't that odd? Um, can you go to Omar Al-Gabra's tweet? Omar Al-Gabra is the transport minister who these days is more famous for the absolute disaster that is Canadian airports, like just absolute disaster. <laughs> Look at this tweet. I couldn't believe the chutzpah of him tweeting this. Many of the goods we all count on every day are brought to us by truck drivers. Am I a two-year-old? Am I a two? Why are you talking to me like I'm a two-year-old? I've had the chance to meet many of them this year. Yeah, when they were in jail. And listen to their stories. I like stories because I'm a grown-up. Your work is essential for our supply chain and for all Canadians. Thank you, National Trucking Week. You know, Omar Al-Gabra was part of the Trudeau cabinet when Trudeau said the truckers were racist, were misogynist, that means they hate women, were intolerant, were bigoted. This is what they said about the truckers. When in fact the truckers were very diverse, every background. A lot of truckers from Quebec, a lot of truckers who happen to be Indo-Canadian, including Sikh truckers. Not only did they defame the truckers, smear them, insult them, call them names for merely peacefully exercising their right to protest, but they arrested them, jailed them, seized their trucks, seized their bank accounts, invoked a form of martial law called the Emergencies Act. To this day, there are truckers that remain in jail. I learned today there's a trucker who's been rotting in jail since May. I want to learn more about his case. Tamara Leach, the peaceful Métis grandma, who was sort of the spiritual leader of the truckers, was put in jail, what, 48 days? On what? She hasn't been convicted of anything. Inciting mischief? I don't think anyone in the history of Canada has ever been jailed pending trial for a charge of inciting mischief. I don't think anyone in the history of Canada has been jailed for actually being convicted of an inciting mischief. How do you possibly do that? And Omar Al-Gabra has the temerity, the chutzpah of going online and saying, I love truckers. <laughs> I love you guys. Except for when I'm demonizing you, jailing you, seizing your bank account, or deploying riot police against you. Other than that, I really like you truckers. What a disgrace he is. In the same vein, I see news in Blacklocks, which is one of my favorite media outlets, one of the very few in this country that, like us, don't take money from the government. There's a story in Blacklocks <clears throat> about the justice minister. Now, remember who the justice minister is. His name is David Lametti. And, and he looks like, you know what? You can't judge a book by its cover. But he looks like a weasel. I'm sorry, he does. And I say that because I can't help think about how he got his job. You might recall his predecessor was uh, the first indigenous justice minister in Canadian history, a woman named Jody Wilson-Raybould, who, I mean, in, in certain ways she was too activist to, for, for me, she was too left-wing for me, but put aside ideological differences, I think Jody Wilson-Raybould may have been the most ethically sound, morally sound, conscientious cabinet minister in a generation. I don't think there was anyone who was more moral or ethical or clean than Jody Wilson-Raybould. 
And she wouldn't go along with some trial fixing scheme that Gerald Butts and Trudeau had. And she was literally fired as justice minister because she would not let Trudeau interfere with the criminal trial of his buddies at SNC-Lavalin. The most ethical justice minister in Canadian history was fired for being too ethical. And she just happened to be an indigenous woman of color. So who says, boss, 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 I want her office. I want her paycheck. I want her title. I want the power to appoint judges. And yes, I will do everything you say. I will throw any trial. I will do your bidding, Justin. But that crooked, crooked weasel, David Lametti, just a reminder of who we're dealing with when we're dealing with David Lametti. He is the most crooked justice minister to follow the most honest justice minister. And his sole selling point to Justin Trudeau was, I will do the dirty things that Jody Wilson-Raybould will not do. Just a little introduction to who we're dealing with. So let's go to that story in um, Blacklocks. Feared another rail blockade. Attorney General David Lametti used emergency powers against the Freedom Convoy on fears protesters would block railways, according to the Department of Justice records. Briefing notes did not explain why Cabinet allowed 2020 First Nations blockade of railways without invoking the Emergencies Act. Threat, threats were made to block railway lines, which would result in significant disruptions, staff wrote in April 23rd briefing materials to Attorney General Lametti. Railways serve customers in almost every part of the Canadian economy, said the department. The result of a railway blockade would be significant, wrote staff. Canada's freight and industry transports more than $310 billion worth of goods each year on a network that runs from coast to coast. Freedom Convoy protesters did not block railways. Cabinet invoked the Emergencies Act on February 14th. No similar action was taken to end 2020 rail protests by First Nations. Month long blockades dated from February 7, 2020 in support of Wet'suwet'en First Nation demonstrations over a gas pipeline. The blockades cost $283 million and resulted in more than 1,000 layoffs, according to a parliamentary budget office report. Thanks very much. Uh, a complete lie by a complete liar. The truckers went nowhere near the, near the railway. The truckers honked their horns in Ottawa till the judge said, stop honking your horns, and they stopped. Truckers blocked the bridge between Windsor and Detroit for, what, a day, day and a half, and then they moved when they were told to. They didn't block for a month like Trudeau's allies did. And why do you need the Emergencies Act anyways? I, well, the one excuse that sounded almost legit was we need the Emergencies Act to get tow trucks. Now, that's laughable when you hear, when you actually say it, but the criminal code, in fact, allows police to commandeer any vehicle, including a tow truck. It's a lie. So what a pack of lies. They're warming up. They're getting ready with their pack of lies to talk, uh, because here comes the judicial inquiry into the trucker's convoy. You hear Mocha mention that. Mocha um, has a documentary coming out. The timing of our documentary release was to coincide with the beginning of this commission. The judge says he has emergency surgery, so the commission is being delayed a bit. But you can already see their attempt to revise history, and that lying weasel David Lametti wants to be part of it. Oh, hi. That was a clip from our Rebel Daily live stream. It's hosted Monday, Wednesday, and Friday by the big boss man, Ezra Levant, and Tuesdays and Thursdays by me, Sheila Gunn-Reed, and my good friend, David Menzies. On the live stream, we talk about the news of the day, we show some videos, and we interact with our viewers at home. We stream at 12 noon Eastern, 10 Mountain. You can find us on YouTube, Rumble, Super U, and Odyssey.